Okay. Remarkable evening. But you have to give me 15 more minutes. <laughs> no, it's okay. Dr. James, thank you so much again for being with us this evening. Well, my pleasure. Uh, but we don't, you know, we still need to make sure that we get this history right. And so we one of the questions that you have is to look at how we tell that story now. And you've got, a, you've got a map that you've been given that is supposed to be what we're supposed to be doing. And, and we've asked you to identify what's missing on the map that, that most people get today. I pray the map that you receive, the map that if you walk into the Ministry Center today, that is the map that you would get. I will tell you that that map will be out of print. <laughs> in fact, if you pick lots of them tonight, they'll be out of print fast. <laughs> um, and so, what was exciting was to look at what you suggested was missing in the map. And I'm going to give you some homework, a little bit of homework tonight, because we are working on, uh, with the Slave Trail Commission, putting together a route that will combine a lot of things in downtown. And I'll tell you what the parameters are so that you can kind of think about this when you take this map home and kind of go, okay, what? Um, we want to, to do this as a giant public art project sometime, I think, in mm -hmm. April. Um, TED Talks are coming to Richmond, and we like to announce it at TED Talks that the day following TED Talks, we'll be on the street actually marking something through Richmond that will combine to create a 10K walk. Now, that's the parent that that, so if you suddenly put that parameter on it, it makes it a little more interesting because you want to, and so the first pass of this was all national historic landmark sites in the city. And the map that we're gonna give you this evening actually does all of them with the exception of two, because you can't walk that far. One is Monument Avenue, and one is Hollywood Cemetery. All, every other national landmark in the city is actually on this route. There's more that has to be added because there is a bias in national historic landmarks uh, because most of them tend to be uh, sort of European history. And so the notion of adding a lot of things to the site from the sleigh trail to Maggie Walker to the river and everything in between and connecting all the neighborhoods was sort of the plan. Now, does it include everything? It doesn't. It really doesn't. You know that. There are certain ones that we think are really important, but each neighborhood we're hoping will put together, for instance, it gets you to Jackson Ward, but Jackson Ward needs to put together a comprehensive, you can't do that and get everything together. Churchill needs to do a comprehensive walk of Churchill. Yes, even Fulton. <laughs> yes, Fulton. And a variety of other ones. So that, that the thought is to create one giant loop, and I'll give you the history, the quick history of, of how this happened. Went to the Chamber of Commerce, went to Boston, saw the Freedom Trail, and said, let's do something like that in Richmond. You know what? The Freedom Trail was done in 1952. It was 20 years before the Freedom Trail actually got marked hmm. on the street. I think we can do things a little more quickly here, but it's, we're going to have to kind of do this in an interesting way. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you, on a for you to leave and leave tonight, a proposed route. This is not final route. Please, please, it's, it's, this is part of why we're all here. Uh, so that by the, when we come back for our next assignment, in the 1970s, um, we can have a more, a more involved conversation about one we're going to look at what the map is today, what's been added in the last three months, and what we might be able to add. So that's, so that's the assignment, but let's see what we discovered tonight. So what I did was took all of your input <coughs> and then very quickly uh, tried to go through and look for the major themes that emerged from what everybody in this room said. So the first um, first part of it was uh, what the major themes were that happened in the 1960s. So these are things that were said more than once, right? That's the theme. So it's not every individual response. But the things that came up over and over and over again that we need to make sure are part of the way we tell our 60s history. Mm -hmm. uh, the Civil Rights Movement in Richmond, 
um, particularly the Tallheimer sit-ins. That came up uh, multiple times. Um, desegregation, um, as well as the resistance to that, massive resistance. Um, annexation, someone said the annexation saga, which I thought was a good way to, um, to phrase that. Uh, and then finally, the highway construction and um, destruction of neighborhoods that accompanied that. There were a couple of really specific things that I thought um, were interesting that didn't rise to the level of themes, um, but were kind of good things. One was the 1962 Crown Oil Company fire on the James River in Fulton. I didn't know about that, that particular one personally. Um, and then also the um, flood in 69, Camille, that was the, uh, the kind of basis for uh, tearing down Fulton, the premise for tearing down Fulton. And then there was somebody put a, posed a question, which I thought I'd pose to everybody, which is, um, did black folks patronize the legendary Santa? Y'all can answer that one yourselves. Yeah. Do you have a picture with Santa Claus card? I, I, don't, I don't know if it's who lost this, but I've taken a picture with the Santa Claus. And, <laughs> was it? I was with Santa Claus in 68, 69, 70. Okay. Cool. Um, wow. Interesting. All right. So someone got the question answered, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but these are the major themes that came up around um, what needs to be told about Richmond's history in the 60s. Um, the part about what's. Um, why are we not working? There we go. What was missing off the map? All of these things had more than two responses, and I put them in order of their occurrence. So the number one thing that people said is missing is the slave trail. Um, number two, African burial ground. Number three, Lumpkin's jail. Um, the Jefferson Hotel is not on that map, and a bunch of you noticed that, picked up on it. Um, the Hippodrome. Uh, specific neighborhoods, a couple people named specific neighborhoods, but there was, uh, I think, three or four people who said neighborhoods should be marked on this map. Yeah. And then finally, um, three folks said the uh, site of the Eggleston Hotel should be marked on there. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, I just, you know, just for posterity's sake, um, we have this thing, those of us who do Kwanzaa, one of the principles is Fuji Chagalio, which is self determination, which means that you have to take responsibility for naming yourself. And when you call the slave trail, it's making it go into the memory of everyone as being that these people were identified as slaves. And I would prefer if everyone would embrace the name the trail of enslaved Africans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so please, when you write it, just think about the fact that I am representing everybody that's in that ground, and a lot of people who are still living that we reject the name slave trail. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm uh, very familiar with that conversation. I believe that there is the, the official commission is called the slave trail. It's well, a part I disagree of, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, uh, so I'm just putting this out there for part of the, where that conversation needs to go is there is an official body that has adopted that name and that the labeling is coming from that official body. And so that conversation um, needs to Get to the folks. We don't have to just yeah. because they say it doesn't mean that this is not represent the community. Right. I'm saying yeah. I represent the, the, the discourse coming out of the community yes. and they represent the political structure right. and there's a difference. And I'm saying in this form I don't see any government officials. Therefore and thank you for raising that um, yeah. for the attention. Um, and I will say that that's probably what, one of the uh, things about putting it on this map that's going to be a challenge because part of our framework for the conversation was what's going on the map. And that's going to be driven partially by the politics and the officials, but I appreciate you bringing that to the attention. Um, and then in fact, the African burial ground, there were a number of different names that were um, put out there for that one. I collapsed them all into that particular one trying to honor what I've heard a number of people say about, about that. So I went with that name, but absolutely that is a, it's a, it's a complicated question. How do we honor the people that went before? Ask um, the people who are of the descendant community what they want. Absolutely. And we're saying that we would like to be known, known as that being the trail of enslaved Africans. And if you disregard that, after we've spoken publicly, then you are no longer serving the people and you're out of order. Thank you. Um, the must see, um, and I apologize, I can't edit my slide after what you've just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So and this is in no particular order, but these are the things that were that people said more than once was on their must-see list. So uh, the James River, in particular Belle Isle, uh, and then related sites, Canal Walk and Flood Wall. The museums, uh, the ones that were named multiple times uh, are up there. MOCE is the Museum of the Confederacy. Um, the cemeteries, um, Hollywood Evergreen and African Burial Ground, all got multiple mentions. Um, the Trail of Enslaved Africans and uh, Lumpkins. <laughs> 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 no experience for me. Um, multiple neighborhoods, Churchill, Chaco Slip, Monument Avenue, all got multiple uh, mentions. Maggie Walker in the National Historic Site. The 17th Street Farmer's Market, I thought was interesting, was on several people's must-see lists. Jefferson Hotel, and then a bunch of people mentioned restaurants. So we all named them, others just said restaurants, but clearly that's part of our, uh, our Richmond culture. So do you want me to put the map up here on the screen? So the proposed map, and again, we're going to have to work on terminology and a lot of other things. And I, I hope that that can spur a bigger conversation, particularly in the African American community, about how the vocabulary. Because we want to get it right, but we need guidance. And I think that that is a tough one. Mm. And so please help us as we move forward on this on how, what's, what's the language? that we use because it is going to be an interesting conversation. The important part at this point is to make sure that these sites are on the map. And so the map that we're going to pass out, please don't get crazy. <laughs> I have a question about um, uh, Ralph White. Yeah. Um, and I was like a map of uh, Shaco and in relationship to the, uh, uh, the industry that took place in um, Shaco mm -hmm. So I don't know, if I have, was that practiced at all to pinpoint some of the, because I know when you go down to Shaco Bottle, there's a building, there's a walker, and they said, maybe this building was bad, there was a bunch of stuff that was going on. And we had a map that pointed out, like, corner to corner, what store was what, like, you could buy insurance yeah, for. Bounty Hunter or whatever. One of the, the, the new pieces of research that's just been done by Mara McGinnis, an incredible book that really begins to look in some interesting ways at identifying. I think I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to be in whatever I say, I'm going to get in trouble, I think. But I think by focusing just on Lumpkins, we really deny the size and scope and magnitude of the trade. <laughs> And so that what we, what I think we need to do is make sure that people begin to see the pervasive, pervasive and yet concentrated nature of the slave trade in Richmond. And that that's hard to do on a map. But I'll tell you that I'm going to give you I'm going to one, but that you're absolutely right that that I think that there needs to be enhancements to the. To both to all of our the way we talk about Richmond's history, <coughs> and this is just a proposal to sort of get people to think about if, you, if you're bringing someone to town, what would you do with them? And I'm going to just kind of do a quick list of the things that you'd see along the way, and then we'll then we'll reconvene. Uh, when, we'll reconvene in the 70s. <laughs> um, but it, but in, in other than those big landmarks. You've got the canal, the Christopher Newport Cross, the Holocaust Museum, the site of Libby Prison, Tobacco Road, the, Henrico, the old Henrico Courthouse, the Churchill Historic District, the Elmira Shelton House, the site of Elizabeth Van Lu's House, the Poe Museum, the Reconciliation <coughs> Monument, Lumpkins Jail, Shaco Slip, St. Paul's Church, the site of the Freedmen's Bureau, the site of the Freedmen's Bank, the Civil Rights Monument, Memorial Hospital, which I think is an important thing that we've got hospitals in this neighborhood. The James Monroe Building, the site of St. Phillips, the Library of Virginia, the new and old City Hall, the Maury House, the Lee and Grant House, Black History Museum and Cultural Center, Linden Row, Ken Valentine House, Bowling Hacksaw House, uh, the Richmond Public Library, the Work Cassidy House, um, and so that this is a pretty comprehensive 10K walk, given the, the sort of parameters that we're working with. Does it get everything in every neighborhood? No, because you gotta, it's like if you draw a line from one to the other, you can only get so far. Um, but we, these are sort of, this is the beginning version, and would love to, when we reconvene in 30 days, uh, to continue the conversation. But 
Here's a really interesting opportunity about 2015. When all those folks start coming to Richmond, we have a way to say, because what happens now is someone goes to the visitor center and there's no really, if you ever try to navigate this city, uh, it's impossible whether you're walking. And we'd like to encourage people to actually walk it because suddenly you understand the city better. You can understand the stories that Dr. James has told us even about actually walking that Broad Street. You know, it's not about driving by a car. And I think that, that getting people onto the street really make a difference. Walking by the side of one thing's jail, walking across the bridge, those are things that make a real difference in your experience versus um, the, the zoo. So um, thank you for coming this evening. Um, we're going to tech roll so that there will be a prize at the end for those who attend all five. Um, if you have thoughts between now and then or can't make the next one, Please just email me. We'll have some of my cards at the front of that. We need to get some away this evening, too. Oh, we are. Don't leave yet. There are prizes. While, um, while we're getting the prizes set up, if you could take your keypad and pass it towards the center aisle so we could collect those, that would be very helpful. Thank you.